Howdy folks, it's Mr. Pete again, your YouTube shop teacher, and this is my tips number 790, all about lathe milling attachments. I have four different attachments here. You may have watched the previous video, which was 789, where I did some modifications or improvements on the little south bend milling attachment, but I got all of my attachments out, and there are four of them, and I'm just going to do a little bit of a review for you and for me. There are four different brands, and I want to compare them and show you the different machines that they will fit or work on. Remember that these are not that great. It's never as good as a real milling machine like a Bridgeport, but it can get you by for small jobs, light milling, and so on, but they leave an awful lot to be desired. But let's take a look. Over the past 10 years, I have actually made about 8 or 10 videos using these milling attachments on various lathes. So if you have not seen them, I'm going to put on the screen right now a list of those. And in the description of this video, I will have links also, should you want to watch them. And there will be many more in the future that I am going to um, make with these, many more videos, I mean. Particularly the South Bend, which I have only had in very recent months. So this is brand new to me. The other ones have been around for a while. So, in review, this is the South Bend. They came in six or seven sizes. This is the Atlas Craftsman. It came in two sizes. This is a Palmgren, and they came in three different sizes. And this is unknown. I've shown it in other videos. If anyone is able to tell me what machine, what lathe this belongs on, please do as so. This is a page out of the 1956 South Bend catalog, and there it is, along with all of the attachments, again, available in six sizes. I think I said seven sizes a few minutes ago, but there they are, and I'll put a still picture of this at the end. It was available in metric, too, way back in 56. Okay, you're looking at the bottom of the South Bend unit. It has that round dovetail exactly like a 9-inch lathe does on the compound. So you remove the compound to mount this on the machine, bolt it down, and it can be turned to different angles. You've got a protractor here, and when you loosen up these two bolts, you are also able to swing it at angles. And then with the little knob here that I just replaced and the work held in these jaws, you can feed up and down and there's a little graduated dial here so that you can do that accurately. So it, it's really well designed, it's just that there's a very much a lack of rigidity when using one of these compared to a massive milling machine that can absorb all the vibrations. And now I'll go out and put this on the 9 inch lathe just so you can see how it mounts. I'm not going to do any cutting today, this is more of an inventory video than anything else. An introduction to milling attachments, if you will. Remember, six sizes, and the largest one would fit on a 16-inch South Bend lathe. Here I am at the 9-inch Model C South Bend lathe. And you can see that the compound can be taken right off. I've already loosened these two set screws. They might be square bolts on some machines. And the compound will pull out of there. And it has the same dovetail as the attachment. So I put that on like that. Tighten down those two screws, and then there is a bolt, you saw it in the other picture, that would go into this half moon slot, and then you could set it at whatever angle you wanted. It could be at zero, like it is now, or 90, and there's a graduation a witness mark for that. So you can see that it will swing, well I've got the vise down a little bit too far, but it will swing, oh, a full 180 degrees. And if it's not in the position that you want, they also sold an adapter 
that would allow you to mount this offset a little bit. But you'd probably use it in that position most of the time and sometimes all the way over in this position. But you can see that the work is no longer in line with the center of the chuck or the collet. That's why you might need that offset attachment that I just talked about. So there it is on the South Bend lathe. Next, let's have a look at the Palmgren milling attachment. Now, these came in three sizes. I'll show you a picture here in a minute from the old catalog. And this is universal. It will fit on any lay. That is, it would fit on the South Bend. But in a minute, I'm going to put it on the closing lathe. Notice that at the bottom there is no dovetail of any kind. So this slot here goes over the tool post and you tighten it down with the regular tool post wrench. Two and a half inch jaws on the middle size one. This is the middle. Good for 10 and maybe 11 inch lathe, but they are really telling me and you to use the next size larger on a 12 inch lathe, but I'm going to use this because I don't have the next size. This uses almost a standard palm grin two and a half inch vise like you'd see for uh, any drill press with some modification. So you tighten it with the regular screw, tighten your work with the screw. Some of these had a hex on them so you could get them a little bit tighter. It is a dovetail, it's just not a very steep angle like we're used to. It has gibbs right here and then this thumb screw here is your lock. Loosening up this bolt or nut will allow you to swing it to different angles and there's a protractor on this as well. And then your feeding is done vertically with this knurled knob. Let's take a look at the catalog pictures. This is a page from the 1962 Palmgren catalog, so don't get your hopes up on these prices here. But the one that I have is the model 250 in the middle here. And it was, what, $30 at the time, and it has two and a half inch jaws. There are some samples of different milling operations that could be performed with this attachment. I'm going to mount the palm gun on the closing in just a moment, but first let me show you this picture here in the closing parts book for the closing 12 inch 5900 lathe that I have. So closing did in fact make a milling attachment. I've never seen one in the flesh, but there it is. And let me know if you've got one. But since I don't, let's mount the palm burn right now. This is the closing lathe, and I've set the compound at 90 degrees or zero, whatever you want to call it. And you'll need a piece of uh, stock, this is 5 8 that will fit into the tool post, or a heavy washer. This tool post ring will not really work on this lathe. It might work on some machines, but not on this one. So we just straddle the tool post. Put the stock in, snug that up, square it up. Now that's not square enough. I could square it off of the chuck face here like we do with some other uh, attachments. And this would need to be tightened down extremely tight. There is a video that I made some time ago using this attachment on a Logan lathe if you are a Logan owner. But I want to show you something here that to me is a real shortcoming of this particular attachment. I put a workpiece in the vice jaws. I got it snugged down. But the support here for this is really at the tool post. So the distance from the workpiece where the cutter would engage and the center line of the tool post is really almost six inches. That is a tremendous hangover and source of vibration and lack of rigidity. So you would have to uh, operate this with very light cuts. 
Now I had another vise like this. I guess I had another attachment that did have an Acme thread here on the palm grin and a hex right here. I wish I still had that one. I guess that's the one that I sold. But we can move the work up and down with this knurled knob as I said before. And if we were going to keep it in a position for milling I would tighten this screw here to take the slop out of the gibbs. And we would of course tighten up the carriage lock here as well. And take very light cuts on aluminum with a sharp bit. <laughs> Alright, let's take a look at the next one. Now let's have a look at the Atlas Craftsman milling attachment. And these were available in two sizes, which I'll show you in the catalog here in just a second. This is the larger of the two that will fit the 10 inch and 12 inch Atlas Craftsman flatbed, flatway lathes. This is really very nicely built. I think maybe this is the nicest one of all. Even though we tend to think of Atlas as maybe slightly inferior to South Bend, but this is a beauty. Got a lot of distance right here. You got the two jaws, original jaws that are there. A nice little crank here. Zamek and a collar, kind of a small collar and full dovetails here. And we can swing this left to right by loosening up these two square headed bolts. You've got four gibbs one of them being a lock. And by unlocking, as I said, these two square bolts here, we can turn the vice portion of it at any angle we want. There's a nice little protractor here. And I like very much, this is all cast iron, these very heavy ribs here that give it a lot of support. I think it's interesting to note the difference here between the Atlas and the South Bend. The Atlas uses, well, a hole here and the dovetail, the round dovetail is on the lathe itself. Just the opposite with the South Bend where the round dovetail is on this attachment or the compound and it fits into a round hole that is on the South Bend lathe. Notice there's quite a bit of difference between the size of these two. And I haven't measured it or looked at the specs, but obviously the Atlas lathe has a lot more vertical movement than the South Bend. The Atlas attachment, rather. Again, here's the milling attachment in the 1956 catalog for the 10-inch lathe. And down at the bottom here, you can see that they show some of the specifications specifically the vertical feed is three and a quarter the cross feed is five inches and the vice capacity is two and three eighths I believe and this is the milling attachment for the six inch atlas it's considerably smaller but I think they use the same picture in the catalog and there's the specifications if you are interested in reading them Here's the compound off the Atlas lathe. Now remember there are a couple pins in there. I don't think I'll take them out. They have an angle on the end and we tighten these around the dovetail that's on the lathe. It's very easy to lose though. So a man, and I'm sorry I forgot your name, made me a couple of these which can be put in here as a keeper and then just snug this up and when you put this away, you wouldn't put this away so much as you might put this away for a period of time. Snug those down and you will never lose those hard to find pins. And here's what those pins look like. Actually you could make them out of a dowel rod. I'm not sure what the angle is right here, but you could easily measure it off of the dovetail that's on the lathe. Okay, let's take this attachment over to the Atlas lathe and set it in place and show you a few of its features. Okay, let me set the Atlas attachment into place. I already have the pins in place. And you have to make sure the pins are oriented correctly. And it can be rotated.
protractor down here and then we would lock it. And it operates like that. And lastly, let's have a look at the mystery milling attachment. I still do not know who made it. There is absolutely no maker's mark or any indication on here other than maybe some casting numbers as to who made this. Now, one thing I wanted to point out here is that this has a male round dovetail the same as the South Bend and they are the same diameter which is 1.375 1 and 3 eighths diameter but how about the distance here the center distance to the center of that slot I don't know I'm just using a dividers here I don't think they're the same I am going to, going to go out into the other shop in a minute and see if this will fit on the 9 inch south bend lathe. It is missing the jaws. It has a few peck marks in there as you can see over the years. But other than that in pretty good condition it's missing the original wrench. I made up this wrench. Still got some rust on there and it's got a graduated collar here. Very small diameter. Very hard to read, as most of them are. Little protractor here, and a protractor down here, pretty much like the South Bend. This is a very heavy and nicely built attachment, whatever it fits on. And I don't know if we can go by this greenish color on here or not. Let me know in the comments, again, if you would be able to identify this. Let's go out in the other shop. Okay, we're standing here alongside of the 9 inch South Bend, and I'll be darned if this attachment doesn't fit perfectly. There were a couple burrs on the dovetail that I had to file off from being banged around, but as you can see, this bolt hole here lines up perfectly. Now I have a little interference here right now, so I have to raise the vise portion up and then it will swing around. So I'm wondering if this was made by a third party to fit South Bend lathes and advertise in Popular Science or something like that because there were gearboxes that could be retrofitted to the Atlas and several other machines and Logans I believe if I remember correctly. So now I know what it fits. I do think that at one time I tried to see if this would fit on my South Bend 10 inch heavy which I no longer own and I believe it did not but that's a little vague for me so I guess the mystery has been solved at least in part. Well that concludes this video. I hope you enjoyed it. A comparison here of the South Bend, the Palmgren, the Atlas, and Brand X milling attachments. Which one do you have? Which one do you favor? Or do you think that these are almost on the order of fraudulent and have little or no use in anyone's shop? Put it in the comments. This is Mr. Pete saying so long for now. Real quick review here. This is the Atlas Craftsman 12 inch compound. This is a beat up old South Bend 9 inch compound. The South Bend has the male round dovetail on the compound whereas the Atlas uses just a hole and their dovetail is on the machine itself on the cross slide and fits into there. So that's the difference between the two probably most popular lathes that you are ever going to run into in the United States, at least for the home machinist.